James Charles is annoyed at some fans for showing up at his house. Here's how it all started. James recently bought a new home in Los Angeles and uploaded a house tour on his YouTube channel. Within a month of settling in, people found his new address and showed up at his house. He never shared his address on social media, but people somehow managed to find it. James Charles was extremely upset and shared this Snapchat. Hi, I've avoided talking about this issue for a very, very long time because sometimes when you talk about an issue, it can become a bigger issue. But this is getting very, very out of hand and I need to address it right now. Um, if for some reason you know or have found out or done research on where me and my little brother live, um, do not come here because you are not invited. Um, don't drive here. Don't walk here. Don't drive by and scream Sister James out the window. Don't get out of your car with the James Charles palette and ask me to sign it or take a picture with you or send a video to your friend because I absolutely will not. In fact, if you are ringing my doorbell eight times every three minutes and hiding behind my garbage can, I will call the police because that is literally harassment. This is my private property and this is my place of work and it is so incredibly rude and it just makes me feel very very unsafe and uncomfortable and now my neighbors are starting to get annoyed as well which is completely unfair. I will never understand the mentality behind thinking that this is generally okay and what I really don't get is the parents who know that their kids are doing this or even worse driving them here because they're too young to actually drive themselves. It, it blows my mind, okay? People deserve their privacy. This is my home. If I see you in public, I would love to give you a hug. I would love to take a selfie with you. I would love to thank you for your support to me. I would love to sign your palette if you happen to have it or your sister's apparel hoodie or send a video to your friend, but not on my front porch. Please leave me in peace. Please leave my family in peace and respect people's privacy. It is really not that hard. He shared similar messages on Twitter that read, Please stop showing up at my house. I will not hug you, I will not take a photo with you, and I absolutely will not sign your palette. It's extremely disrespectful and makes me feel very unsafe in my own home. Respect people's privacy, it's really not that hard. I am so annoyed. I was supposed to be done filming hours ago and now I can't even focus. Some fans didn't agree with James and said, Your frustration is completely understandable, but don't forget who got you to where you are. It's those same people who will keep you going or ruin you. You have them to thank for where you're living and what you're driving. Comes with the territory, kid. James, you were so ungrateful. You need to be respectful to your fans. You need to understand that your fans created you, your fame. Quit YouTube if you don't agree with the responsibilities of looking after your diehard fans. You have money, they want a role model. Wow, James Charles. You want the money and fame but don't appreciate your fans. Your post shows your true makeup hiding behind all the shades you put on your face. What a disgrace. You wanted the fame? You're famous? You have to accept it. Stop living in such obvious places. You chose the fame. It didn't choose you. You just got lucky enough to actually be relevant. No one told you to put yourself out there. That's what happens. These are the repercussions. When you share your life and where you live on social media, how do you not expect your fans to come to your house? Fame comes with a lot of and you decide if you want to share certain information about yourself or not. So you technically ask for it, my dear. If it wasn't for your fans, you wouldn't even have a home. This is the type of that comes with fame. If you don't want it, don't be a public figure, okay? James Charles, you're such a little snowflake. Look at Super Mario Logan. He has 7 million subs, fans meet him at his house. You're just a who can't understand fame equals fans. While other fans agreed and defended James, saying, because you gain fame doesn't mean you should just accept losing basic human rights. Any sensible human being knows that you just don't go to people's houses without permission. You can be arrested or get a restraining order. And no, it doesn't come with the fame. Celebs are still human. It's trespassing and it's illegal. Nothing to do with fame. People really be defending invasive fans who stalk James Charles because they give you their money, you need them. LMFAO, sure. I hope your boss client shows up at your house for work-related matters. Oh, okay. Then I hope you'll feel comfortable if your boss shows up unannounced at your house, starts asking you to do extra hours at home, and you won't say shit about it because he pays your salary. So, what's the big issue? Social media blurs the boundary between public and private space. Attorney Wendy Patrick shares a study by Kim and Song, which reveals celebrities who share personal details on Twitter can foster a sense of intimacy with their fans and followers. They explain that increased social presence stems from celebrities sharing details of both their professional and personal lives, and fans retweeting. And for YouTubers, we feel so close and connected to them because we learn everything about them through their videos and social media. 
We meet their friends and family, we go shopping with them, we hear about their insecurities and embarrassing moments. We feel like we personally know them. And this is really dangerous because it creates a false sense of familiarity. This is also known as parasocial relationships. I've talked about this before in my video on Marzia, but let's talk about how it applies to James Charles and his fans. In 1956, Donald Horton and Richard Wall proposed the theory of parasocial interaction to explain how television audiences develop perceptions of having a relationship with celebrities, talk show hosts, and others who appeared frequently on their screens. In other words, it's a one-sided relationship. You may know a lot about your favorite influencer through their videos, but they know nothing about you. As entrepreneur and certified YouTube consultant Tim Schmoyer says, both parties, the fans and the influencer, just really like the feeling the other provides for them, but you really don't know each other. Psychologist Dr. Romani confirms this one-sidedness and says, My concern is that, for example, if someone's a vlogger or someones it's a one-sided conversation. So in other words, then, you're really sort of peering into someone else's life mm -hmm. versus engaging them right. and both of you getting needs met. What mm. then you don't get practiced in that, because that's yeah. a skill to have the give and take of a human relationship. So you can see, it's not a real relationship. Your friends might be surprised and happy when you show up at their door unannounced, but for an influencer, it's asking them for more of their public time, their work hours. You may think influencers are your friends, and they may care about you as much as it's possible to care about possibly millions of people, but they're also doing a job. Sure, you help pay them by watching their ads and buying their merch, and you might have friendly interactions with them, but that doesn't entitle you to their private lives. Like many other Twitter users said, it's like if your boss, who is the reason you can pay rent and buy food, shows up unexpectedly to your house to talk about work-related matters, basically asking you to work overtime without getting paid. Sure, it may seem a bit unappreciative if an influencer thinks talking to fans is work, but when you have millions of fans, you can't mentally handle talking to that many people at once. Nick Crompton, a former member of Team 10, explains that once you allow one fan on your property, more and more keep coming and expect the same treatment. Why would you want around 50 to 70, 80 people outside your house at all times? Hey, don't pound. <laughs> Guys, don't pound. Knock. Knock is courteous. Teensy. The wall. Get a piece of it. Because as soon as you go out that door, it's instant screaming from a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. And usually you have paparazzi filming, so whatever you do and say or don't say or don't do, like it's all recorded. When that's happening and you have all those people outside, you don't want to get pictures with them because that encourages everyone else to come as well. Mm -hmm. Can we keep moving? Keep it gentle, they make you famous. Remember, they give you paychecks, they make you famous, you stay gentle. But, if you don't get pictures with them, you look like a yeah. Because you're ignoring the people that are supporting you and enabling you to have the life that you're living. Mm -hmm. Remember, you guys make them famous, you guys give them paychecks. What is the answer to that situation? Try. We give them paychecks, we make them famous, tell them to be gentle. There's no way of rehiding the house, it wasn't our fault, there's no way we would want that. And wanting privacy doesn't make a celebrity a bad person. Even the biggest stars like meeting fans under the appropriate circumstances. Harrison Ford likes to view his fans as customers. I know full well that those are the people that are supporting my life. I grew up working in stores, and I have respect for my customers but even he has his limits with his fans. Under some circumstances, you just have to say, I'm sorry, I'm with my family, I can't do that now, Ford explained. Please understand. YouTuber I'm Alex also touches on the subject by explaining this experience at a meet and greet. I was actually doing a meet and greet and, and I stood there for four or five hours. In fact, I was there more than any other YouTuber at the event doing a meet and greet for the longest consistent period of time. And what happened was, is that I got hungry. I've been there for five hours, I didn't eat breakfast, I slept three hours the previous night before. So I went, hey guys, I'm just gonna have to shut down the queue for like 10 minutes. I'm gonna go grab a sandwich. And then I'm gonna come back, and then I'm gonna go back to meet and greets. And I had a parent turn to me and go, we've been waiting here for an hour. I've been stood there for five. I haven't eaten. I was practically falling apart doing the meet and greet. I could barely even think straight, I could barely even talk. And that's not fair on the viewer, but the entitlement from some people is ridiculous. You know, YouTube is a human team. And I think many people forget about this. 
You may be traveling long distances or waiting for an hour, and it can suck when the line gets shut down before you can meet the influencer. But the influencer is also human and needs time to recharge, whether it's a lunch break or having privacy in their own home. Like Alex says, they aren't a public attraction like Disneyland. And I know some of you might still be in that headspace of, I contributed to their fame so they have to deal with it. Well, here's where it gets serious. According to Section 646.9 of the California Penal Code, any person who willfully, maliciously, and repeatedly follows, or willfully and maliciously harasses another person, and who makes a credible threat with the intent to place that person in reasonable fear for his or her safety, or the safety of his or her immediate family, is guilty of the crime of stalking, punishable by imprisonment in a county jail for not more than one year, or by a fine of not more than $1,000, or by both that fine and imprisonment, or by imprisonment in the state prison. Yes, that includes people who found his address, which he never shared, and showed up to his house unannounced. And under section 602 of the California Penal Code, California law recognizes and respects the sanctity of a person's private property. As a result, it is a crime to enter or remain on another person's property without permission. In these instances, a defendant can be charged with trespassing. And here are some of the instances refusing or failing to leave the lands immediately upon being requested by the owner of the land, the owner's agent, or by the person in lawful possession to leave the lands, driving any vehicle upon real property belonging to or lawfully occupied by another, and known not to be open to the general public without the consent of the owner, the owner's agent, or the person in lawful possession. So now that James has put out a public statement on Twitter and Snapchat, you would be breaking the law if you showed up at his house or hid on his property, or if you drove onto James's property and dropped your kids off. And I know some of you are probably still thinking, well, other celebrities have been nice to their fans when they show up at their house. Yes, but they're taking a huge risk. Remember YouTubers Gavin Free and Meg Turney? Back in January 2018, an obsessive fan broke into their home with a shotgun. Gavin and Meg hid in their closet, called 911, and waited until the police came. Whether you're a celebrity or not, you always want to put your safety first. It's a basic human right. So how do we solve this issue between private and public space? Respect others by understanding that their home and their family is not your source of entertainment. If this sort of behavior continues, we will see more and more celebrities and influencers closing themselves off and even running away from their career. Here's an example. Kristen Bell and Dax Shepard proposed a no kids policy to stop news outlets from sharing, buying, or posting photos of celebrities' children without consent. Kristen even puts emojis over her kids' faces on Instagram. If we continue to cross the boundary into their private lives, then content will just become more and more limited. Next time, you probably won't get a house tour video by James Charles. Some fans have suggested that James build a gate and hire security guards. It's a good idea for safety, but we should also learn to be better people instead of enabling disrespectful behaviors. This isn't a conversation about fame. This is a conversation about humanity. Why have we come to a time where famous people have to be stripped of basic human rights? As one Twitter user says, the people saying this comes with fame are so misguided. Yes, when you gain notoriety, it's pretty much a guarantee people will try and find your address, but why are we accepting that? Why are we putting it on the celebrity to protect themselves instead of condemning the people who do this? They're the ones in the wrong here. It's honestly coming across as within the same vein of boys will be boys. We should not be excusing unacceptable behavior by saying, but that's just how it is. We need to treat people like people. Influencers are not machines and their homes are not public attractions. They're human and they need their time to recharge. How do you think James handled the situation? Let me know in the comments below.